What's up everybody? Tracking racing. Uh, I'm excited to get this new year started off right. It's been a few, uh, maybe a month since my last video. You know, it's the end of the year. Um, for my wife and I, as far as the fact that we have our own business, the end of the year gets a little difficult, uh, a little hard to deal with. And it means the focus kind of goes on making sure that that uh, is all tidied up well. Past that, had a great time with my family for the holidays and I hope you did as well. And uh, here we are, uh, day number one of the new year. And I wanted to kind of do, uh, not a recap video, but I guess uh, where are we at now and, and what our goals are for the new year uh, and get things started off right. So. Um, one, this video is being filmed with a new gimbal GoPro setup, which is very exciting. I've had this GoPro before, uh, but I have not had the gimbal before. Uh, the gimbal definitely makes it a great combination. It's going to make for a lot smoother videos. Uh, going to mean that I can do some cool panning shots and stuff like that, which we'll experiment with inside of this video. Um, it really just adds another uh, layer of being able to make these videos a little bit better. Uh, for myself and better for other people and what I mean for myself is easier to edit edit and uh, Easier to make better uh, when you're actually filming it with good equipment. So this GoPro uh, 7 I've had for a while was a present a few birthdays ago for my brother, which is really nice and then this uh, Hohem uh, gimbal which I'll show you a, a, a video of here with me using it right now and like I said, it's giving me a little bit of resistance in the motors. I've heard that I need to tweak that just a little bit and that'll kind of help aid in those kind of motor kind of feels. But I, I'm digging this thing already. It's called an iSteady Multi and it works for uh, camera phones, it works for cameras, and it also works for um, GoPros, which is what I'm using it for right now. So, so yeah, so first test on this, we'll see how it ends up working. So what's new for the new year other than a new snazzy camera setup? Well, the idea is is to make everything better. And I know that that might be obvious, but uh, you know, I've described it several times in this process that I've really rushed the, the way that I did certain things. And I do not want that to be the case anymore. And the funny thing was is I rushed it to try to get on track sooner, yet it actually didn't get me on the track sooner. It just caused me more problems, which continuously delayed the track, continuously delayed the track, and continuously delayed the track. So now that we're at the point now, it's about coming back, cleaning things up, and making sure that the next time we make a an attempt to get to the track, that it's a good attempt, it's a solid attempt, and the car is actually ready for it. So uh, what are we doing? Well, technically right now we're in the midst of tearing everything down, taking off all the panels, uh, we're going to clean up the body panels finally, do all the body work on the body panels that, that hasn't been done. I always have told people that this is a paper mache build, meaning that currently it was just kind of holding place and not really meant to be extremely functional. I was just trying to get it together and get it to a point where I could drive it, which I did. Uh, but then the harder I drove it, the more it pushed back and the more I realized that I needed to do things better. So anyway, taking off all the body parts, as you can see, and going to clean up all the body lines and get things prepared for wrap in the new year, which is super excited. I can't wait to have uh, uh, Sway on the channel, uh, Sway Design, who does lots of really cool wraps for some really amazing people inside of the automotive industry. And somehow I managed to get his number and, and, and get in good with him and, um, and we work together to be able to get a wrap for this car. And I really can't wait to get it wrapped for this year to be able to race with it. Uh, but to get there, we gotta get everything back together. And to even get to that point, I've gotta clean up all the body lines, get all the fiberglass cleaned up. So that's gonna be a lot of work. But as far as the engine goes and what we're doing here, we're stripping everything down and getting ready to pull the engine out. Once we pull the engine out, I can fix all the things that happened with the great uh, axle issue of last year, which if you're not up to speed on that, right, we had an axle pop and it did some s subsequent damage to the bottom pan, uh, uh, lower cradle, um, and front cover of the motor. Uh, luckily, or engine rather, luckily I do have replacements for those and they are 
currently right there on the floor. So that's super exciting. I'm glad to be able to say that I have those replacements, but at the same time, we gotta go through a lot of work to get that on there. And if we're gonna go through that work, we might as well do a lot of other things at the same time. So pulling everything down, stripping everything down, pulling the engine out, that's gonna allow us to also replace the transmission. If you haven't been following along for, uh, for a long time, I have a built transmission that was built by TTS Transmission that's actually down the road here in Indian Trail. Uh, they are a sponsor of the build, but they're super awesome local people. And essentially, uh, we've built a, a pretty bulletproof transmission to be able to handle the 450 horsepower that this thing can really dose out. And technically it can do more than that, but I, I, I won't see the need for it, so we won't really push it to that. So anyway, that's another thing we'll be able to do while this is out. Finally put in the transmission that can hold the power that this engine's built for. And then lastly, improve on the systems that we already have. So, you know, now that I understand how all of the lines work, how all things need to be ran, you'll notice I've got things labeled, how uh, the fuel needs to run, all the lines need to run, all the air needs to be ran, all the vacuum lines. Now that I understand all of this, I can actually make a pretty good system up, do all very nice classic style lines, right? And improve everything. So now I'm gonna have nice push, press vacuum lines, which is gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna relocate this vacuum block and actually have it welded onto the, um, to the intercooler, which I think will just be a nice touch to kind of clean things up. I'm gonna go, everything is gonna to go to AN lines, right? So even things that I have pushed uh, lock in other places or just more simplistic line types, even the lines that go to the engine, I'm gonna switch over to all AN fittings. You know, that's gonna mean some of those special barb press-on fittings and some other things to make sure to be able to convert them all. But I'm excited about converting everything over to AN fittings and finally making it very simple to be able to remove everything, uh, possibly even put dry locks in and those sort of things in the future. Um, lastly, one of the largest things that I'm excited about is finally completing the cold side of the turbo system. And, and what I mean by finally completing the cold side, very originally when I had designed this system and it sought out a company to have it made, uh, which that company will remain nameless now since they're not, they're not around, um, the whole purpose was to actually have all of this V-band in. And since the system was a little bit rushed, it never was able to get V-band in and we just ended up using couplers. And couplers are fantastic and they do work. I'm not, I'm not saying anything horrible about couplers, but if I'm gonna have the engine out, it's, it's about time to, to get this right. So what I'm doing before I pull the entire engine out, other than getting everything ready to pull the engine out, well, lots of traffic down this road today, is is also prepping this to get the HD clamps welded on. So as you can see right now, and keep in mind this is just mocked up, I've got it mocked up with the furlols and the HD clamps and the pipes. So now it's gonna be a much more simple setup than it was before. Last time, lots of couplers, uh, lots of uh, worm style clamps, and you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but they can all fail and they can fail ra rather easily. So now this time I'm gonna have three inch pipe welded right to the throttle body. I'm gonna have a clamp welded uh, right, or a furlough rather, welded right to the um, cold side of the uh, intercooler. And then now I've got a nice little Treadstone HD clamp there that's gonna allow a little bit of wiggle room, allow it to be a much cleaner transition, and now enough uh, a nice softer transition as well. And you can see that even more with the transitions. I mean, look at how those transitions line up. It's absolutely amazing. So now I'll have a nice transition there that works into a HD clamp setup that has a three inch to two and a half inch furlough. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But again, you can see how much nicer of a setup this is and how cleaner it's going to be to have the transitions going from turbo to intercooler to throttle body. All of it will be nicely welded next door by Vix Auto Body, which is another local sponsor that I'm very happy to have on board. Again, just great people, so that's why I like throwing their names out there. But all of this stuff uh, I grabbed from Treadstone Performance, which is absolutely amazing builder company. And what I mean by builder company, if you're not aware of Treadstone, they, 
they have all of these little parts. So that way, if you're a do-it-yourself, do-it-yourself, or you can just order all these parts, have it welded up at your local shop, or welded up by yourself if you're if you're a pro, and uh, and and put together intake systems and exhausts and all sorts of good stuff. So, the last kind of uh, uh, cherry on top. And right now, I have this on a coupler but this is also gonna be on an HD clamp, and that may be a little bit extreme, but I'm gonna have this HD clamped to the top of the uh, turbo here. And I mean, I might as well, because again, I'm gonna to have to pull all this out to get welded anyway. Uh, very exciting process, a little scary process uh, to yank out the turbo and start cutting it up, but uh, it's gonna make everything so much better. And then in the future, when we convert this whole thing over to a fastback setup, then I'll probably take this off and it's HD clamp and this will HD clamp into a really cool intake system that probably feeds into an overhead duct uh, or a roof scoop, something of that nature. So I'm very excited to get all this cleaned up. It's something that I've, I've literally wanted to do since getting this turbo kit, since it really wasn't done right to begin with. And I'm super excited about having all this piece together. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be so clean. It's going to look extremely functional and it's going to be uh, smooth transitions from the turbo to the intercooler to the throttle body and the hope is maybe a little bit more power but at the end of the day maybe a little less lag or just smoother power now maybe i don't notice anything at all but i'll be very happy when i open up the uh, trunk here and and i can see that everything's nice and clean so the other thing that i'm going to do i guess the final thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to clean up all the wiring this is an oem uh, engine harness that's been butchered more ways than one and long before me so I'm excited about pulling it out rewrapping it getting it cleaned up and making sure that I have no more electrical issues related to that wiring harness because I have in the past between uh, I mean you can even see them these wires right here not so fantastic to some of these back wires and some grounds coming undone and things of that nature so again Improving things, sprucing things up for the new year, making sure that it's ready to go. I'm going to finish the exhaust system, finish off the rear, diffu uh, rear diffuser, and, uh, and yeah, I I'm just really excited about getting the car back on the road for the new year. It's still going to take a month or two, so to be just outside of uh, winter, if you can even call what we're having winter right now in North Carolina, but it's going to be amazing to get it back on the road and it'll be amazing to have all these changes done to it um, other than that like i said we'll have a video in the future that kind of talks about the axle failure again and really pinpoints what happened there that should be my next video and then all the things i'm going to do uh, preventatively to make sure that doesn't happen again but this video kind of gives you a good update on what we're trying to do with mr2 in the new year uh, really get it buttoned up really make sure that it is ready to go wrap the exhaust heat shields uh, cold shields on this side getting the ventilation system working out well for the back vents all the things associated with getting this thing on track and making sure that it is absolutely solid experience and we don't have issues even getting there uh, let alone once we actually get there so thank you all again uh, for the support uh, in last year and the, in the years prior you know, I know this isn't the fastest build on the internet. You know, if you're looking for a quick turnaround, I'm certainly not your guy. Um, but hopefully I'm going to be the guy that has the, the big comeback this year, gets it on track, and we all get to kind of experience that and, and come together and have a, have a good moment with that. So I'm getting there. I'm working hard this year. I reassure you it's getting on track. We're going to make this bad boy move faster than it's ever moved before. New transmission, new setups, uh, new fittings, and, uh, and a new year. So thank you all again, and I hope you all have uh, great success in this new year.